Welcome back, my Brick family. This is Spruce and Studs, and I have finally got my favorite unit in the whole entire Warhammer 40k universe. Well, that's a lie. Actually, my favorite unit is the Vindicare Assassin, but these guys are a very, very close second. As you may surmise, what I'm talking about are the Blade Guard veterans. Every single time in which I see these guys, it reminds me of basically future knights with their sword and shield battling their way through the whole entire battlefield or whatever you want to call it and basically tanking everything with their shield and their armor while just indiscriminately slicing up the emperor's foes and these guys are just basically badass futuristic knights and that's exactly why i love them I remember as a kid, I was always a fan of the Lego castle theme, and I always loved the knights. So when I opened up the box, what was surprising was that I found that these characters actually come in three separate boxes. I thought just like with the Incursors, the Infiltrators, as well as like the Reavers, they all come in like a large gigantic box set and you can pull out the rest of the boxes with it. However, these guys are different because they come in their own individual boxes. So this is the first Blagar veteran. And this is the second Blagar veteran in which we will be reviewing. Finally, the most important person in the squad is going to be your Blagar veteran sergeant. So I'm really, really excited to bust these guys open and review them with you. So without further ado, let's get to the opening. All right, folks, are you excited? I'm excited to actually finally get into these Blade Guard veterans. This is going to be so cool getting into my favorites or nearly my favorite group in the whole entire Warhammer 40k universe. I'm gonna open this up. Our first Blade Guard veteran. Ooh. All right. Up first is the gigantic storm shield. Let's see what the storm shield has to offer. It looks like it's got some weathering going on over here, as it should, because storm shields do take the brunt of a lot of damage. And as you can see, there are some oversprays from the skull onto the shield itself. Obviously, this is not going to be a seamless process i understand that but i love the iconography over here very 40k very blade guard veterans -y. looking at the back it looks like you have the handle which the space marine can properly hold on to this thing and then obviously you have the i best i believe these are the power nodes that supply the i guess the the force field around the shield that gives this thing a 4 plus invulnerable save in the game. So that is really cool. And then let's look at the backpack. It's like there's really nothing much to be said about the backpack. Um, I do notice that there are shading, obviously, which is nice to give a little bit of definition. But I'm going to bemoan this whole entire video that this model unfortunately does not have highlighting. I actually think that the highlighting is probably a little bit more important than the shading because it makes the model pop. And I'm rather disappointed that this only has shading involved. So with the backpack, you have this little peg up here that you're supposed to attach this halo up here, like such. And the halo is well, it's pretty sharp, obviously. It does have, I believe, some painting issues over here as well. But again, nothing to be really bothered about. You also see some mold lines as well down here. No big issues. Now let's take a look at the heavy bolt pistol down here. Uh, the heavy bolt pistol does not have any kind of highlighting whatsoever. It does actually have the normal weathering that you find that Joy Toy makes on every single one of these weapons. You have some, I guess, almost like a dry brush kind of look to it. The 
gun casing itself again is a flat black there's nothing to make it stand out you obviously don't see the mold lines over here uh, so very accurate representation of a heavy bolt pistol i really like it but like i said it could use a little bit more pop over here let's put this off the side and then we have the bare head of the space marine and there are no highlights whatsoever here and no shading at all it's just a flat brown color and at least with the face you can actually see the eyes and the pupils there is a decent amount of shading that's involved over here so you can see the deep grooves have a deeper skin shade tone color and then the beard actually has a little bit of unfortunate skin tone sticking out over here but again nothing to be bothered about and this is actually a very highly detailed head more than i believe the rest of the space marines that i've reviewed in the past there are some issues with oversprays here again this is not a human being that's doing the painting it's a machine so i understand that there's going to be some sort of variations over here and now we will take a look at the, the holsters here. So it looks as if there is a lot of shading involved over here too, especially with the grooves here. It has a nice, very leathery look to it that I like. And there's like almost like a heavy look to it. And then with the holstered one, it looks about the same. Unfortunately, as you see here, there are some overspray issues over here with the paint doesn't bother me mold lines as well i guess if you're bored enough you could probably like take an exacto and smooth it out whatever doesn't really matter and let's look at the meat and potatoes of the whole entire figurine which is obviously the blade guard veteran the first thing i'm going to do is actually take the master crafted power sword out i didn't know in the prior reverse video that you could do this so it's nice that this scabbard is functional that you can take things in and out so with regards to the master crafted power sword it is kind of a very dark color over here i'm actually kind of surprised that this isn't more of a gradient so you should start off technically with a darker kind of gunmetal color and it slowly lightens up to this but this is very dark if a little bit too dark for my taste to be honest and then with the power nodes over here because it's so dark you don't see a lot of the blue popping out up here so let's put this back into the scabbard like such and it fits in really nicely it just glides right in and out as for the space marine model itself it is chock full of detail over here that again has so much iconography behind it but let's just focus in on just the paintwork over here. Um, again, some oversprays from on the pauldron of the gold area onto the blue. Same thing on the other side. Uh, this Blade Guard veteran definitely has a lot of a weathered look to him because most Ultramarines, I, I believe their veteran squads have pure white helmets and this obviously is not a pure white helmet and it's a lot darker than i would expect on a veteran model so the lenses actually do not have too much of an overspray it actually stays within the recesses where it's supposed to be at and the iconography on the front on the chest plate um, again does not have a lot of shade nor does it have a lot of highlights be nice if this was like a lighter bronze color or copper color to make it pop out but i guess joy toy isn't doing highlights anymore on this and over here you have the purity seals with a lot of ribbons over here it's nice that they put the shading over here where the recesses are and then there are some oversprays here with the 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 wax part of the purity seal being covered by some of the white on the ribbon so interesting over here that i didn't actually see that there is actually highlighting here within the armor plates but unfortunately when you put the knees up like that you can't see the highlights you want to see the highlights over here where i'm pointing at right now but regardless this is very very ornate there's got a lot of 
just a lot of detail over here. I like the, how the kneecaps have this skull over here and this almost like the sun thing. Very, very ultramarines-y. And then with regards to the, uh, I guess it's a tabard, I believe. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I really like the gradient over here where it's lighter up top and then it gets darker on the bottom. So this is a painting technique that you typically use that you can um, wet blend the stuff. So it's nice to see that a machine can actually do a fairly decent job of it too. So overall, pretty cool. So let's move on to the second one. All right, we have unveiled the second Blade Guard veteran. Let's see what the difference is. So clearly right off the bat with the Storm Shield, you can see that this one has a purity seal but everything else seems to be fairly the same. Uh, apparently there's a little bit more issues with the uh, the weathering over here. It looks very kind of uneven to be honest, but again, nothing to bother me too much. And then you have the backpack along with the halo, pop it on as such. I'm not gonna go over in too much detail. Let's look at this particular head over here. Looks kind of sorrowful for some odd reason. Looks like he's maybe seen one too many wars. I have absolutely no idea. But you can still see the pupils. There is a decent amount of detail over here. I really like how much detail Joy Toy has actually put in with the painting. I don't know how they actually got the process done right, but that's pretty amazing. You do see some uh, bleed from the flesh tones onto the, I guess, the helmet part of it. Same thing over here, the helmet has bled onto the flesh part of it. There's a decent amount of shading that you see there involved over here. And uh, compared to the first head, I would actually say that the first head looks better. This is the first head right here. It definitely reminds me of a ultramarine or a space marine in this one. I don't know. His expression is a little bit too sorrowful for me. Should look a little bit more mean. Um, so you also have the holstered heavy bolt pistol and the unholstered heavy bolt pistol. But let's actually see if this Marine has a heavy bolt pistol in it. Apparently he does not. He does not come with it. Let's take the Mastercrafted Power Sword out of the scabbard. And again, it's pretty much the same. And then pretty much the iconography is uh, same as the other one. The the plastic over here, I forgot to mention, is this is very soft and malleable. I think that is because it needs to kind of adopt any kind of position that you want to pose this particular model with. So that's probably why this is soft. This belt wraps around, obviously, the whole entire Marine, and it's also made of the same very soft plastic material. Anyways, uh, just pointing out here another painting issue. Uh, there's some bleed with the brass cut in color into the skull socket, so this is a little off in my opinion. Um, there is some highlighting here going on with these leather, soft leather parts, so that's something different. Another thing that I didn't actually show you guys was that uh, you are actually able to pop this head off, and it's actually quite easy to do. So you take this and pop it off and it has a ball and socket joint that you can use to put the other head on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the naked head up here. Just pops right in as such. This Space Marine around, it has full 100% 360 articulation. Same thing with this shoulder joint, but you can rotate this around as much as you want as you see here. And then you can move the knees and the legs around as much as you want over here so you can pose him however you want to pose him in like a running kind of position over here or whatever you want take this backpack put it on the back of the space marine pops in as such very easy very smooth then you can take the power sword out of the scabbard then put it into the space marine's hands these hands tend to be very soft and pliable just like just like this material here. So you're able to kind of push the power sword into position here, like such. And then finally, with this too, this hand here, it is also very soft and pliable. You can grab 
push it in to hopefully wield the storm shield correctly and hopefully it won't break the model having some issues over here fitting them in but here we go this is the gist of it the space marine with sword and board this is how it's supposed to look i'm not sure if this is supposed to be this floppy but i'll reposition this guy later on so let's move on to the sergeant all right this sergeant's name is sergeant proximo and again you don't really see this on the american releases so we'll see if joy toy keeps with this or not now for the sergeant the sergeant's storm shield is adorned and festooned with a bunch of purity seals so the first guy had none this guy has three and i suppose that's the only major difference between the two so i'm not going to highlight everything else because you obviously see it let's take a look at the sergeant's head so this guy <laughs> he looks certifiably pissed off and <laughs> i definitely think that this actually fits the space marine look to the t you can see the scarring that's going on over here he's got this sneer and snarl on his face but I do like the, the shading over here. It makes the uh, the ridges pop out a little bit more. And then you obviously can see the pupils and the eyes here, which is really nice that they actually have that touch here. Uh, the hair, unfortunately, does not have any highlights whatsoever. Obviously, you can't shade this color because it's, well, it's black. So one of the other major differences is this plasma pistol. I was wondering if they were actually going to do the plasma pistol or the Neo Volkite blaster, but this is the plasma pistol. One of the things that I actually wanted to see was more of a plasma glow. You typically will see like a white color down here and then progressing to a lighter blue into a darker blue to have that glow type of effect on a plasma pistol but again this is not a painted model it's something that a machine does but this is actually pretty impressive considering what the machine can do so again no highlights uh, there's a lot of brushing over here to get a nice uh, gunmetal effect very accurate obviously to the space marines lore so the meat and potatoes the sergeant himself Let's take a look at the difference between him and the rest of them. So you got the uh, the pauldron over here, again, weathered. You have the special sergeant insignia over here. And then moving on, you have the same uh, very soft material with the belt area that's, again, festooned with a bunch of iconography over here. It looks like you can attach and detach this via a peg mechanism. Looking at the helmeted version itself, it's actually painted really nicely. It looks like the green color is staying within the lens area. And then you have the helmet up here. It's a very dark red and the white is, well, it's definitely an off-white. And there you have it, folks. You have the whole entire Blade Guard Veteran Squad in their full glory in front of you. We did see a lot of very cool things that are going on. I really like, again, the Ultramarines iconography over here, as well as the attention to detail with all the purity seals and having this writing over here. I also do like, this is a standard thing for all Joy Toy models, that is very poseable into any pose that you want. Like I said, the attention to detail of mimicking a Warhammer 40K miniature all the way up to a 1 to 1 18th scale is impeccable. I think that Joy Toy did a very good job with this with regards to just the level of accuracy that's involved. I really also like the, the heads. As you can see here, there's a sergeant's head. This is the first veteran's head. I really do like the heads that were given. I like to have the options to swap them out. I know that the Blood Angels Death Company intercessors have separate heads that you can swap out. But I know that the, the Reavers as well as the Incursors and Infiltrators don't have these separate heads. I guess they're not special enough to actually get a separate head. But this brings out a lot of extra character for the Space Marines. I like the non-helmeted version for these veterans. It just looks so badass that way. So some shortcomings on this thing, unfortunately, again, are me griping about the lack of highlights that are on these figures. 
because I'm so used to the infiltrators as well as the incursors. The Invictor Warsuit actually has a ton of highlighting, but I guess the later production models don't have these highlights, which I think is of a detriment. There are some unfortunate oversprays here and there, but from a distance, you actually cannot tell. It doesn't really bother me. It's not like you're going to be, you know, up close and personal every single time when you're playing with these things. Is it worth the price of entry? For me, of course it is worth the price of entry. These are my second favorite units in the Warhammer 40k universe. I would pay pretty good money for these guys, even if it was north of like, I think $75 or something like that. I can't remember how much these guys were, maybe like 60 bucks each, or is it 50 bucks each? I can't remember. But I think that this is definitely worth the money that I paid for. This is Spruce and Studs, and I hope you enjoyed this review video. Please look for me in other review videos. There's going to be a bunch of them coming out very, very soon as I'm getting a ton of things. So thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.